Story time on how I slept with my best friend's husband on their wedding day. Okay, so boom. I have a best friend and we've been best friends for 10 years. I love her and care about her, but I have one huge problem. I'm in love with her soon-to-be husband. It's complicated. But let's call him John. Rewinding 10 years back when I met my best friend, I also met John. He was actually my friend first and I really liked him. I told my best friend about him and wanted to get to know him more, so I invited him to come out to the movies with us. Well, by the end of the night, my best friend made a move on him and they ended up kissing. My heart was broken, but when I was in the car with my best friend, she said that we weren't dating yet and it was fair to game. At that point, I distanced myself from him because I felt weird about the whole thing and they eventually started dating. About a year later, Later, one day I was alone with John and on this day everything changed between us like for part two part two on how I slept with my best friend's husband on their wedding day okay so boom like I said about a year later one day I was alone with John he actually told me that I was the one he wanted but thought since I invited him to the movies with my best friend and that she made the move he basically thought I was passing him on to her, my friend. I told him, no, that's crazy. I liked you. And we both laughed and hugged it out. But that hug was pretty passionate. The chemistry and overall energy between us changed, but we never acted on it. Now, fast forward 10 years later on their wedding day, we were all in the same hotel, but different rooms getting ready. When it was time for all of us to get ready, all the girls went to one room and then all the guys went to the other. My best friend sent me to her room to get a charger and when I entered the room, John was there. I told him I'm sorry that I barged in and he was like, yeah, that's not a problem. But then he walked up to me and like for part three. Part three on how I slept with my best friend's husband on their wedding day. Okay, so boom, like I said, I told him I'm sorry for barging in and he said, yeah, that's not a problem. But then he walked up to me and said, I don't know, I just can't help it. Every time I see you, I almost wish it was you. And I know y'all gonna hate me for this, but literally for 10 years, I've been fighting off my urges, but at the moment, I just couldn't. I was in love with him and he's not married yet, so fair game, right? Well, we ended up doing the nasty and it was very passionate. Then I went back to the girls' room and acted like nothing happened. I feel like shit, but I can't help but be happy Stare that clean, we using at my least favorite shared tool that from little TikTok moment shop. together. I mean, y'all, I always liked him. We never acted on it again, but now I'm just wondering if I should say anything or should I just leave it alone and never do it again? What should I do, y'all? Am I the asshole for jumping out of a bathroom window to avoid my mom's attempt at forcing a reunion between me and my ex fiance? Some backstory. I've been dating my ex fiance Sarah, for four years. We had been planning to get married in November 2020, but I found out at the start of this month that she cheated on me. She begged me to give her another chance, but I broke it. The problem was that being cheated on is, in my mind, completely emasculating and humiliating. So I never told anyone that was the reason we broke up. For obvious reasons, Sarah also didn't tell people that we broke up because she cheated. So people have blamed me for the breakup, including my mom. They just see that I dumped her out of the blue. I got very strict no contact with Sarah after I discovered she was cheating on me. Sarah has been talking with my mom and has convinced her that if we could talk one more time, we would be able to reconcile. My mom has been applying hardcore pressure on me to talk with Sarah, but I've explained that there is no chance we will ever get back together. So tonight, I go over to my mom's place Seeing if my smart bottle stays Christmas cold Eve. in the sun. I'm there for a bit talking with my aunts, uncles, and cousins when the doorbell rings and I can see it's Sarah. I ask what the fuck is going on and my mom says that she's wow. invited Sarah so we can work this out in the spirit of the holiday. I'm pissed now because the only way to explain my side of the story is to tell everyone I was cheated on. Complete humiliation in front of my whole family. So as my mom goes to the front door, I go into the bathroom. My mom starts knocking on the door saying that I need to come out and talk to my ex like an adult. I say fuck it, kick out the window screen and get in my car and go home. My mom called a short while ago saying she's cutting ties with me over my behavior. She's really fixated on me jumping out of a window. And that Sarah will always be like a child to her. My sister called me after to read me out for ruining Christmas. I broke down and told her that Sarah cheated on me, which is why I dumped her and didn't want to see her under any circumstances. She called me a big asshole who was lying to cover for myself. Am I really in the wrong? Am I the asshole for not letting my best friend have her wedding on my property after being uninvited? One of my 29 male best friends, Carla, 31 female, is getting married soon. It's only meant to be a small backyard type of wedding, but they've been planning it for a few months now, and originally it was supposed to be on my property. They wanted it because it's private, has lots of open space for the reception, a nice view, and the house could be used for them to get ready and stuff. Of course, I said yes. She and her fiancé, Rick, were very happy. 
Thing is, Carla and I do have a history. We went out on and off in college, but decided to stay friends. Then I met my wife, we got married, Carla met Rick, and now here they are. Now my wife knows I went out with Carla back in college and she didn't care. Carla still went to her wedding and everything. I never knew if Rick was told or not, it's not my relationship, therefore not my business to say anything, so I never did. Rick found out recently and not in the best way. Not sure how, but from what I've heard from friends is that one mutual friend told him, no idea why, that we used to date. Not only that, but apparently Carla said a couple years ago she was still in love with me when she was already dating Rick. Don't have actual confirmation if that's exactly what he was told. All Carla told me is that Rick was told about our past and he's angry at her for never saying anything. It became quite a drama and didn't hear from her for over a month until now. She told me they're going to couples counseling and that the wedding is still on. But Rick requested Making that fruit I do not ice attend. lollies. It sucks, but I totally get why he wouldn't be comfortable. Then I asked the obvious question. Where are they going to hold the wedding then? To my surprise, she still said that they want it at our place. Rick said so too, and in my mind, I'm going he doesn't want the guy who dated his fiance years ago at the wedding, but still wants the wedding at his house. My wife and I are expected to just not be at our home that weekend, and I told Carla no. They're going to have to find someplace else since we're not going to simply leave our home to them for the weekend. Not only for safety reasons, but it just doesn't make sense. Rick doesn't want me around because he's not comfortable, but he's comfortable enough to have their wedding at my house. They really want their wedding here though, and because of that, I've been bugged by not only her, but also Rick, and some friends who think I'm being a petty asshole for not letting them have the wedding here anymore. Honestly, don't think I am. It just doesn't make sense at all to have to leave our own place for a wedding we're no longer welcome to, and leaving our home totally vulnerable. Still being accused of sabotaging their wedding, and Rick believes that it's the least I can do after everything. Am I the, am I the asshole for not wow. letting my brother's girlfriend into the house to see him? My 21 male brother, male 25, got into an accident that left him disabled. His girlfriend was driving, and although it was ruled an accident, my mom kept blaming her for what happened. She banned her from coming near my brother after she was injured Giant, too and returned from the remover. hospital. Mom moved my brother in and now is his main caregiver. She told everyone that his girlfriend is banned from entering the house after she attempted to contact my brother via calls and texts. Wow. She would even call my mom crying saying it was an accident, but my mom refused to forgive. Yesterday, my mom went out and told me to watch my brother and not to let his girlfriend in if she attempted. I agreed and 15 minutes later, the doorbell rang. Am I the asshole for not letting my brother's girlfriend into the house to see him? His girlfriend said she saw his mom leave and then started begging me to let her in to see my brother for a few minutes. I refused and she said mom was being unfair and cruel to her because this was an accident and promised no one will find out. I said I was sorry and asked her to leave. She started crying and asking me to put myself in her shoes but I told her to leave and stop involving me. She said I should do this for my brother and I left her at the door and walked back inside. She started calling my phone till I responded saying I'd report her for harassment. My brother's friend called, berating me, saying that I should have let her in to see my brother for this a few minutes. This tool is amazing for cleaning stairs. I'm a bad brother and should be ashamed. Am I wrong for refusing to attend an apology dinner after my mother-in-law called me a bad mother at my son's funeral? I lost my From son to congenital heart steps. disease and he did not survive the open heart surgery at the age of one year and six months. He was the greatest blessing I had in my life. Everyone kept telling me things will get easier with time. I know that no matter how much time goes by, I'll still be missing my baby and everything sweet about him. Mother-in-law and I were in constant conflict. Things had always been bad between us, but in those months, we reached our limit. She kept getting involved in my son's treatment and criticized every decision I made, claiming I didn't know how to handle my son's illness. We went low contact, but she kept causing issues occasionally. My husband was torn between our son's illness and his mother's issues. When my son passed away, she came to the funeral and caused a scene by arguing with me, knowing I had no energy for it. She used the fact that everyone was there so she could say it was my fault my son was born sick and I didn't take care of him properly and that I didn't listen to her when suggested other ways to treat his condition and that I was the one who took their grandchild away from them and caused them heartache. She then loudly called me a bad mother. I had no idea how I kept my composure and kept standing on both feet. She then went to tell everyone I kicked her out as a way to hurt her feelings and lied that I convinced my husband to ban her from visiting her grandson's grave. My husband later sent his side of the family an email talking about my mother-in-law's behavior during and after our son's illness and telling them he will no longer be seeing her. That had the family criticizing us, saying mother-in-law was just trying to do what was best for her grandbaby and called us selfish for assuming we're the only ones struggling with this tragedy. We haven't seen his mom in one year and eight months. I'm now three months pregnant. No one knew, only my sister-in-law, but word got out. A week later, I had family members saying I was invited to a dinner hosted by my mother-in-law so she could both apologize in front of the whole family and settle this issue before the baby's born. They said mother-in-law was regretful and offered to financially provide for her grandbaby and they want to see that. 
I refuse, but my husband surprisingly wants me to go. I had his grandparents calling me, telling me that I'm a person with a good heart and forgiveness is something that I'm capable of giving. I told them I'll never be sitting at the same table with the person who called me a bad mother at my child's funeral. I still remember it vividly till this very day. My sister said this change of heart from mother-in-law is probably for the new baby. It could be, but I insisted I won't come. They're saying I'm making it hard for everyone to move on and pass this unresolved pain and should really go. So, should I? I the asshole for asking my sister to stop fostering dogs so she could help me with my kids. I, 38 female, have four kids ages 11 months, 3, 5, and 10. I love them, but I'll be the first to admit that our house is constant chaos and can be very exhausting. My sister, 33 female, is child-free but loves my kids and was happy to watch the older two or three to help me keep sanity. I tell her all the time how grateful we are for her help. The thing is, is right now she's fostering an elderly chihuahua so they can't go over. My sister claims they'll stress the dog out. I think this was a fair assessment, but this was the fourth dog she's fostered. This dog took eight months to find a home for, but I knew I could breathe a sigh of relief. I the asshole for asking my sister to stop fostering dogs so she could help me with my kids. My sister said there was a second dog she desperately needed to foster, so she planned to take that one in. She said she couldn't do more babysitting than she already is, and I could literally feel my stress level spike. I opened up about how much I've been struggling since she got the dog, how little sleep I get at night, and how my husband hasn't been helping. I asked her to point blank not get another dog. She comforted me, but didn't agree with anything I said and said she needed to think. So I'm asking a lot, but I don't have anyone else to help me. I can't afford a babysitter, and my friends all have their own kids. Above all...